Brazil is located in Midtown, just north of downtown Oklahoma City. It's home to the Cap Arena, it's home to the Bossa Nova at the top, and to Anna Davis. I recently sat down with Anna Davis to talk about her journey to Midtown from Brazil. Why do I do what I do? Because I love it. I cannot see myself doing anything else. You know, I love, I love coming to work. I love being in the kitchen. I love, I love what I do. You know, I love, you know, when I get over here on a Friday night and I see everyone having a good time and I go from table to table and I talk to people and, uh, you know, uh, a lot of times I go back in the kitchen, make something special, bring to them, you know, and, uh, you know, every day, all I ask is to touch one person's life and I think I do that, you know. Uh, you never know who is walking in the door that needs a hug, who needs a word, you know, or special attention, you know. And uh, I just, you know, I cannot see myself doing anything else. I love this stress too. <laughs> Anna Davis now spends her days at Cafe do Brazil, located in Northwest 11th and Walker. But she grew up in the fourth largest city in Brazil, so moving to Oklahoma City was quite a culture shock. But as you'll learn, Anna was full of determination. I got here in 1983, and I was so disappointed. I remember going to downtown, because in Brazil, you know, downtown, it's where things happened, you know? And uh, I remember that it was not one single soul. And uh, it was uh, uh, the factory, but the spaghetti factory, and it was the only place. And now you walk down downtown, break town, it is, fascinating and uh, you know 25 years imagine what this place what this area is going to look like in about five more years well I've always had this dream to come to America you know and then I uh, I had my next door neighbor that had just got back from uh, US and he was telling me all these great awesome things about America so you know a few days after I was talking to my uh, younger brother and um, I said uh, you know I want to go to America and he goes why do you want to go to America oh so and so came back and he said it's fascinating and uh, you know I just I was thinking that I want to go there and then a few days after he came to me and he goes uh, you know you're talking about going to America I'm going to America and I go I'm going with you. He goes, no, I'll go first. If it is as good as he say, then you come. And I've always wanted to go to another place. You know, I come from a very large family. We are 12 children and four girls and eight boys. My dad is very conservative, you know, and uh, so I really, I couldn't go to work until I was the age of uh, 22, you know, and because uh, he was very protective. So, and I just wanted to fly. I want to go to different places. I want to, you know, to cut that umbilical cord with all the boys and have the same, um, the same future that my mother had, you know, with 12 children. And uh, my sister is pretty much just getting married because you have no way out. And I didn't want that. So I really had the, you know, my, ne my uh, next door neighbor telling me about America. And uh, so all that desire to meet other people, learn different cultures and do something different and pretty much prove to my dad that a woman, you know, could be somebody without having, you know, to get married. And uh, a woman has its place and, uh, sh you know, she can have children and all that, but then again, you know, she can do things that, you know, that she wants it. So I came a few days after my brother told me and uh, that he was coming to America and I go, I'm going with you. And then he said, uh, I'll go first. So we both went to the travel agency and uh, we looked and we talked to a friend who is the travel agent and she goes, where do y'all want to go? And he goes, well, I want to go to America, but where? He goes, I don't know. So she opened. She opened the U.S. map on her desk, and my brother went like this, bang, Oklahoma City. <laughs> we had never heard of Oklahoma City. So imagine moving to Brazil, not even knowing how to speak Portuguese, or even having heard of the city you just moved to. But Anna was full of determination, and she had a goal. Yeah, in 1994, I was, you know, like I said, I was working for Johnny's. I worked for Johnny's for six and a half years. 
and then I started working for Casino Domino and then that's when I fell in love, you know, pretty much with the uh, full service in the restaurant and I worked there while I was finishing my college. When I finished they offered me a management position. So I worked in a couple of stores here and then I went to Tulsa and opened the main store for them. Then while I was in Tulsa my mother got sick so I had to leave and go to Brazil. So while I was in Brazil I was looking around and all these little places and all that and I go, hmm, I can do this on my own, you know. So I came back and in two, in two weeks my other brother was living in Denver so I called him up and I said, Mario, we're going to open our place. And then he goes, well, let's wait. Let's wait until January and that was uh, June or August. And uh, he goes, no, it's not the right time. Let's wait. Let's wait. Well, the following week I had a day off. I came to Oklahoma City and looked around at the paper. That is this place for the rent. I went over there, took one of my very good friends, and the place was filthy. And uh, my friend goes, Anna, it's now or never. Anna Davis and her brother Mario opened up More Than Muffins, located at 19th and Class. It's now home to the Guatemalan Fair, served up by Cafe Antigua. But Anna remembers More Than Muffins starting strong, making $60 the first day, then $120 the next. And then the second day, we're almost doubled, so we go, oh, why? this is awesome. We thought we were on the top of the world, right? From there, it was $50 and $40. And we start freaking out, but you know, things start getting a little better. And, but it was a lot of stress. We opened in 1994 and then in 98, he decided to step out and that plus he was not happy. The restaurant just too fast for him. And uh, so I bought him out in 98. And then once I bought him out and I go, bang, I'm gonna change the name and I'm going to start showing more of who I am. 2000, we purchased the building. We purchased this building here, and it was pretty scary because there was nothing here. You know, so we took a chance. We bought the building, and then we renovated the first floor for my husband to move in. So he moved in. We ran out of money, so I kept the place for a little longer, and, uh, and then we did the renovation here and then finished here and then we went to the Bossa Nova and did the Bossa Nova. So it was almost like three phases, you know. And uh, it was a little scary because, uh, you know, moving from over there and uh, we stayed, we were closed for six months from the transition there to here. You know, I remember when we moved over here, when we're looking for a place, you know, on a Saturday especially because the little place was so busy, so I would come home every Saturday and tell my husband, we got to find another place. The customers are getting mad. I cannot see them. I cannot serve them. We need to find a bigger place. So we started looking for a bigger place, you know, and then we got this place, and then it was so stressful. I would go home after a full day. Why did we get this place? It was, oh my God, it was, it was too much. But now, you know, now it's, it's so much easier. I have great staff. I have staff that has been here since day one, you know, and uh, they, they have learned my ways of doing things. They have learned, you know, a lot about, you know, what Café do Brasil is all about. You know, we're about to, you know, know everyone. You know, people come in, we shake hands, we hug, we kiss. That's, that's me. And after all these years, they have seen that, and uh, they pretty much do the same thing. It's like it's like a big family. Like I have no kids, you know. And it's like they're all my kids. Cafe do Brasil is open six days a week for lunch and for dinner, including brunch on the weekends. But there's more ahead for Cafe do Brasil and for the Midtown area. In September, we're going to do the first time. First, it's going to be annual Brazilian festival. We're doing the uh, Brazilian Independence Day on uh, September the 12th. And uh, we're gonna be showing a little bit of all the Brazilian cultures, such as the capoeira, the samba, uh, arts. We have a little tent selling art, selling the Havaianas, the flip-flops, uh, gemstones. So we have probably six or seven people selling different things. We have music, a truck of beer outside. Of we cannot miss that. <laughs> and food. And food. So uh, it's going to be on the 12th and uh, from uh, 3 to 10. 
and my another goal is, and uh, I have talked to uh, uh, Lori, Lori Tyler, uh -huh, about uh, doing an international festival for the for the area, and getting all the restaurants involved, and uh, do you know uh, everybody involved with food, showing a little bit, you know, whatever the culture is for that particular country. So we're probably doing that in the spring. That's what we'll be talking about. Anna says she's learned a lot, and she's seen Oklahoma City grow including the Midtown area, which now features the likes of McNelly's, Stella, and 1492, among others. In five years, you know, this, this area has boomed quite a bit. Um, you know, we didn't have anyone here in five years. But then again, now we have all the dailies. We have McNelly's, which bring great business to the area. Stella's, uh, the Cibber Hotel that had just renovated. We do, you know, it's, it's absolutely wonderful. And also to see that Oklahoma City is getting different places, uh, different cultures, and uh, you know, my dream when I moved to this this area here, you know, and of course I'm not the owner of all these places, but you know, I have talked with the uh, Banta uh, when he was involved with uh, Midtown. You know, the you know, it would be the coolest thing to have for you to park your car, and then you have Greek, you have. Italian, you have French, you know, to do the international quarter, you know. It didn't turn out to be like that, <laughs> but it's still good, but it's still good. <laughs>